Hey everybody, hope you all are doing well and welcome back. And today we are doing our last, our true last, last whiskey flight from our trip to London earlier this year. Uh, the previous tastings that we did, if you have not seen them yet, was a Pappy Flight tasting, a Hibiki Flight tasting, a Weller tasting, and this one, probably going to be one of my favorites, is a flight tasting of some of the hardest to get Blantons, including the Single Barrel, the Blantons Takara Black Japanese Market Only Edition, the Gold, the SFTB, and for good measure, we tossed it in there, uh, the Stag Junior. <laughs> Man, this one was so good. So I'm going to go over what we thought about the flight, which one was our favorite, and how the top-level Blantons bottle compared against its competitor and family member in the same class, the Stag Junior. Now, before we get to the video, if you like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the great stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have a bunch of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does actually really help the channel to grow, and we're super appreciative about that. But also, you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right, now, let's get down to the video. So let's start this one off with a bit of a bang, uh, with a real quick whiskey check. Uh, and of course, at this point, I would be super remiss if we didn't start with one of the world's best production line bourbons in existence. That is the Blanton's Single Barrel. This one specifically, uh, we had gotten previously, so we didn't bring it back from uh, Europe. But uh, it is it was dumped on 5-30-2022 from barrel 1067, warehouse H, Rick number 8. And it was ABV'd or proofed at 93%. So, yeah, let's try this one out, see if we can get a pop on it. Let's see, here we go. Man, they've been they really letting me down lately. Get a glass here and get a little bit of juice. Oh, yeah. And to whiskey. Because honestly, you know what? You can never drink too much of it. You can only really just drink it too fast. Cheers. Oh, man. That's good. All right, so let's get this tasting going with the very first version of Blanton's that we have the pleasure of trying in this tasting, which is the Blanton's Single Barrel. Obviously, it's not this one. This is ours from home. <laughs> but, uh, we didn't bring it with us, um, but it is this version of it. And it is kind of the most accessible, but kind of paradoxically also the hardest one of the Blanton's to get, um, which is the Blanton's Single Barrel. Now, this Blanton's, at least to me, is the quintessential Blanton's taste profile. Uh, it is basically the pace setter for all the other Blantons that we end up trying. Now, the tasting on this one is exactly what you would expect from the classic Blantons flavor profile. It's sweet, it's well-balanced, if not a little bit thin tasting, but it has those kind of core vanilla and caramel flavors and leather flavors. I mean, it's just super enjoyable to have and very familiar. So again, we thought this would be a great place to start. And out of the five that we tried, um, this one actually, I mean, it is pretty good, but it did end up being kind of low on the list at number four out of the five that we tried. So overall, in conclusion, uh, the Blanda Single Barrel is exactly what you'd expect. It is very good. It's super comfortable, super familiar, and super enjoyable as an everyday drinker. Um, but, you know, the one downside to it, if we had to be kind of nitpicky about it, is that uh, the ABV, you know, it's kind of low ABV, but some people like that. It's not over ABV. It's not over oaked. And if you're lucky, <laughs> it's also not overpriced. So that is Blanton's single barrel. All right. So the next one up is a Blanton's that I had never really seen, nor had I ever heard of before. Uh, and I'm guessing it is because uh, of the existence between the relationship between Suntory, Buffalo Trace, and the Japanese whiskey market overall, which is going to be this Blanton's Takara Black Edition. Um, now, this one we actually had gotten after the trip. So it is obviously going to have a different bottle number on it than what we had at um, while we were in London. This one specifically was dumped on 9-8-2021 from barrel number 66, uh, warehouse H, Rick number 41, and it is proofed at a disappointingly 80 proof or 40% ABV. Uh, also has bottle number 87. So this was one that the wife was actually pretty excited to uh, try because one, it's from the Japanese market, which has a very unique flavor palette. And two, it's bottled at ABV 40%, which is something that, you know, usually ABV is something that I love. I love anything that'll set my mouth on fire, but she has a more nuanced appreciation of it. Now, the probable reason for the 40% ABV is, this is complete speculation, of course, is that I would imagine the general Japanese whiskey market drinker has a preference for whiskeys that are a little bit more well-balanced, a bit harmonious, huh, Hibiki? I'm looking at you. 
and not overbearing as some of the other <laughs> typical bourbons can be, including Blanton's. But the lower ABV is very, very noticeable on the palate on this one, especially for those folks who drink a fair amount of really over abv whiskeys. In exchange, though, you get a much clearer flavor of vanilla and root beer and a creamier, thicker mouthfeel. But with such a low ABV, it loses some of that spice and kind of exhilaration that you get with the higher ABV whiskeys. And again, really, uh, in comparison to the other whiskeys that we try, it pales dramatically in comparison um, as we start moving up a line through the Blanton's tasting tests. So for me, the Blanton's Takara, you know, I like it. I think it was a decent whiskey overall. It did get number five out of five on our list, but it's primarily just for me. Personally, it was under underpowered. The wife really liked it, hence why we have it here right now. Um, so I think it is a good one to add to the collection, especially if you have the other Blanton's, because it's a great counter juxtaposition against you know an SFTB or something like that that is really much bigger. It gets you a different perspective on what blendings could be if it was not so focused on ABV. So that is the Japanese Takara Black Edition, Japanese uh, domestic market only. And uh, I'm really happy to have it part of the collection, but it was a number five. So the next blend is that we try is going to be the Blanton's Gold. And I will say right up front that I feel like this is the Blanton's that would have been made as a standard level Blanton's if it was just being released today in 2023. The ABV is pushed up a little bit, but not to the point of distraction. So, you know, it's just a nice accompaniment to the rest of the general typical Blanton's palette. So this one really feels like a, a bit of an evolved version that's been modified for day. Now, this one that we have in our collection uh, was specifically dumped on 8-9-2021. You want to be careful because that marker rubs off real easy. Um, it is uh, from barrel number 545, Warehouse H, Rick 38, and is at 103 proof, and is bottle number 77, if you all can see that. And I have to point out, this is probably one of the like most luxurious looking bottles in the Blanton's line. It definitely looks very fancy schmancy. And the notes I had on this one uh, from it is that uh, the flavor itself is also very luxurious. Um, maybe, again, because of all the flash that goes along with it, um, you know, it all automatically feels like it is the most flux of the bunch, but I did have a great mouthfeel that was having the most amount of cream and the thickest feeling out of the entire bunch. Also got a really surprising hint of espresso, which is something that I don't typically get on Blanton's. I mean, it came up just as a flash. And also, for me, the biggest improvement on the gold over the single barrel and definitely over the Takara, obviously, if you have not guessed it by now, is the fact is that the ABV is at a more modern standard level. So for this Blanton's Gold, I actually put it at number three out of uh, my favorites on the tasting. And realistically, I think that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, if it wasn't so hard to get and if it wasn't so overpriced, um, this would probably be my go-to Blanton's over the single barrel. It is a nice uh, kind of step up, a nice modernization of what sing the single barrel Blanton's was. And I think that I would really enjoy it. But since it is hard to get, you know, the single barrel is also pretty good to stay with as well on a daily drinker. So that is the Blanton's Gold. Now, these last two bottles from the flight are bottles that I would consider basically equal for all intents and purposes. But since we didn't want to have a tie, because no one really likes that, we really had to get down to the very nitty gritty uh, of whiskey and the palate and the flavors to figure out which of them should come out as the top on the list. And really, they're almost neck and neck in every single way, but there are some differences in the little things that make, again, all the difference. So the first of these two is the grand finale of the Blanton's lines that we were able to taste, and probably the most powerful of which is available, and really the most Blanton's of Blanton's, which is the Blanton's SFTB. That's just a kind of a, it almost looks like it's experimental. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> This one specifically that is in our collection is uh, was dumped on 1-22-2021, uh, barrel number 159 from Warehouse H out of Rick 48, and it is ABV'd at 62.05%. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good hefty ABV. But as it sounds, the blended SFTB is without any downshifting of ABV, any blending or modifying from Blanton's in its purest form as it just comes right out of the barrel. Um, which I think in some ways, especially looking at the reviews on of it, can turn some folks off. It just, you know, the ABV is so high and so overpowering that 
you lose perspective on the rest of the whiskey. And I think that is probably pretty true. Also, as an aesthetic note, oh, by the way, this is bottle number 131. But as an aesthetic note, the tag on it, it looks so dopey. Like the Takara looks pretty awesome. Uh, the gold looks super luxurious. But this one just kind of has like a dopey, hi, my name is badge to it. Or it looks like it just got out of like the bourbon hospital tag or something like that. So I don't know if that's just a side note. You would think that they'd have a, like a, a more like beefed up uh, look to it, but uh, I guess they don't. And maybe they don't need it for something that's like the SFTV. Now the tasting notes that we had on it, my personal ones at least, are that it is pretty amazing. Uh, the wife, she was a little bit overwhelmed by the ABV. But for me, especially after running through the rest of the Blanton's line, um, this is really a great place to finish off the night. Admittedly, the ABV, it does dominate the entirety of the conversation uh, in the entire palette. But once the burn does wear off, you get a menagerie of vanilla and leather and tobacco and caramel, and really the longest finish of the bunch out of all of the ones that we had tried. So it is super delightful. Strangely enough, though, the ABV punch, it's not really present in the nose. When you smell it, it doesn't get uh, like this strong like ABV effervescence right off the top. So this one for me, the SFTB, uh, it was my favorite, uh, even over the Stag Jr. So, uh, you know, I think the Stag Jr. puts up a very, very good fight. It is a well-capable whiskey of standing on its own in comparison to the SFTB. But the SFTB is exactly what I've been wishing for from a Blanton's. A Blanton's that is castrate, that is unadulterated, and is a true representation of what Blanton's truly can be if it's not messed with. So the SFTB is going to be the number one on the list for me, and um, it would definitely, and is not definitely, something I would drink every single day. Um, but it is for one of those nights where you've already run through the entire line, and you know, you've already worked your way up the ABV ladder. And the SFTB, you know, it has enough of that horsepower to top off the night and not leave you backtracking uh, down to a lower ABV. So that is the SFTB, uh, the number one pick out of the entire bunch, at least in my opinion. Now, last up today, and as you may have guessed, is going to be the Stag Jr. Now, it's a bit of an odd man out um, because we wanted to do a flight of five, and they didn't have any other blends to do. So we thought it'd be interesting to compare uh, these two cousins, the Stag Jr. and the SFTB, to each other. And like I said, they are both super enjoyable. They're both very, very enjoyable. And they're both intense, and they're both super hard to get. But the Stag Jr. seems to be even more difficult to find, at least at a reasonable price, whether you're here stateside or international than the SFTB. The Stag doesn't have all the bottling information on the provenance that comes with the Blantons, um, but it does have an ABB at 64.35%. That's the one that we tried because we don't have a Stag Jr. here. Uh, which, according to a real quick Google search, brings up that it would be batch number 17 from 2021. The tasting notes that I have on it uh, all really indicate that the SFTB and the Stag Jr. have a very strong family resemblance. Although the Stag has a bit stronger barrel flavor and a bit of a longer finish, and the ABV has a bigger kind of representation within the palate than you would expect. Initially, it tends to be a bit sweeter and more caramely than the SFTB, with a slightly shorter finish. Um, but it's still very, very good. Now, this one was another one that the wife kind of had to tap out on just because the ABV was so high. But luckily for me, <laughs> that means that I got to try a little bit more of it. And again, we were being responsible because we weren't driving. We were just taking the tube. So I was happy to enjoy the rest of it. So really, just by the thinnest of margin, uh, the Stag Jr. is going to go at the number two on our list because it is good. It has all those great qualities I love about a whiskey. It's bold, it's aggressive, it's brash, and it has a pretty long finish. So it ends up coming up at number two on the list. Also for this one, it is one that I want to buy. We've been trying to look and find to buy it, but we're only really going to buy it at a reasonable price. Uh, and I'm not really sure that's a possibility anywhere unless you win some sort of lottery or something like that. So here in SoCal, still have not seen it for uh, any price that was not egregiously ridiculous. So it is a buy but I'm gonna wait until you find it at the right price. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, if you like the Wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the other amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we got a lot, <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe, because it does really help out the channel to grow, and again, we're super thankful for that. Also, it is good for your whiskey mojo, and you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays, and sometimes in between. Now, just remember, before we go, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it wherever you are in the world. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out and adios.